Hi everyone, Mrs Oakley here. This chapter is called Pray and you'll find it on page 193. So if you're ready, let's begin. I open my eyes. I'm not sure what woke me. I hear the gentle swish of wind. I see the snow on the ground and a faint strip of light at the top of the doorway and remember where I am. You two is next to me under the caribou skin. His shoulder is level with my ear. B, don't move. He whispers so softly that his voice almost blends with the wind. There's something outside. My blood runs cold. I strain to hear a noise through the walls, hardly daring to breathe. There is a snuffling sound. Moments later, I hear the crump of snow compressed as something heavy walks across it, then bumps against the side of the hut. I feel the wall vibrate. I want to look at you two, but daren't move. I take shallow breaths, trying not to let the sleeping bag rustle. I am aware that you two is moving slowly, soundlessly. His body is no longer touching mine. The soft crumping sound starts again. I hear sniffing. It's right in front of us by the door. The planks move as something nudges against them. In a split second, you two leaps up, shouting and shining his halogen torch at the gap in the door. I hear a grunting noise outside. You two carries on yelling. There are thuds on the ground next to the hut, then silence. I feel a flutter in my chest as you two goes right up to the door and shines his torch outside. After a few minutes, he comes to sit down on the caribou skin. Neither of us speaks. Once more, the only sound is the wind. I turn to look at you two. He is staring at the doorway, motionless, his face sculptured by the torchlight. He seems to remember I am there. So the bear came back for another look, he says quietly, still looking towards the door. My heart thumps a little faster again. Do you think it's nearby? I don't know. It wasn't expecting a nasty, noisy, bright light. We just have to hope it's not desperate enough to try again. It might feel braver second time round. You two goes over to the bags and takes something from a side pocket. If it does come back, shine this and make as much noise as you can, he says, passing me a torch. I switch the torch on and off. It's like the one Dad bought me for our hiking trips as my emergency flashlight. I bet he never imagined me in this kind of emergency. I feel an ache in my chest as I think about how much I want to speak to him, to tell him what's happened. To, to see his face alive with surprise, with pride, with amazement when he hears about my journey or our journey. A warm tear rolls down my cheek, leaving an icy trail in its wake. I'm sorry I fell asleep, I say, turning to look at you two. I know we both need to stay alert. He's sitting very still, staring through the gap at the top of the doorway, a faint smile on his lips. For a second, I wonder if he's actually frozen like the soup. I follow his gaze and gasp. Beyond the doorway the sky is dancing. Greenish ribbons of flickering whirling light illuminate the sky. Aurora Borealis says you too softly. The northern lights. You often see them on clear nights. It's beautiful, I whisper, like mother nature is playing while, while people sleep. Or the spirits of those who have died playing a ball game with a walrus's head as the ball. I look at you two. What? That's the story people tell here. It's the legend, he chuckles softly. I didn't think it sounded strange until just now. We have stories for everything in nature. They're a good way to pass the time in winter. I want to hear more of them, I say. Okay, he says, but in return, you have to tell me some too. I think about Goldilocks and the Three Bears or Puss in Boots. Maybe the stories I grew up with sound weird too. I'm going to make it through the Arctic night like you two's ancestors by sharing stories. And that's the end of this chapter. And your next chapter is Dawn. And I hope you enjoy that too. Take care for now. And I'll see you in September. Bye now.